Welcome to Soul Journeys. All of what I see is because of the fact that I see Swami and I know I'm doing it for Him. And I feel good, good you know, about it. it, it makes he is Srinivas Rao, a scientist from San Francisco, California. How have you changed? Phenomenally. Uh, firstly, I know it is He that watches all over us. And from the mid-1960s, he has been a long-time follower of Indian holy man Sri Satya Sai Baba. I mean, at times, uh, he's, he does speak to me. I know that. Mm -hmm. And it looks, you know, as I said, I'm a scientist. And maybe I didn't mention that. And so I still sometimes think about me and say to myself, how could that be? And yet he proves to me it is. It is a wonderful story that begins in Brindavan, a story told by a humble, loving man of Little Eagle. Welcome to Soul Journeys. This interview was recorded in San Francisco, California in November 2016. Well, um, I was a youngster. Yeah. Uh, it was literally in my teen years, and it was in the 60s. And uh, I had to travel from Bangalore to New Delhi all by myself. Mm -hmm. And I happened to be in a small compartment, a coupe, uh, in a train. Mm -hmm. And I picked up uh, a, a journal, uh, you know, a sort of a paperback thing that says uh, Illustrated Weekly of India. And it is literally the lowest common denominator that people get just to read on a just journey. Just to pass the time. Just to pass the time. And when I opened it, there was this article on Sai Baba. And I think uh, I've been told since then that that was the first article that came out in a regular journal of that nature, if you will. It captured my attention right away. I think having been brought up in a very spiritual family, um, I looked at that article and I said, this is my call. And I made up my mind it was almost instantaneous that said, you know, when I go home, I got to speak to my parents and say, hey, why don't we go and see this gentleman? From they, Delhi to from Puttaparthi. To Puttaparthi. And, and actually, as sort of life uh, unfolds, uh, Swami had done a number on my parents as well. And <laughs> my parents also... Unbeknownst to you? Unbeknownst to you? Unbeknownst to me. I mean, every summer vacation, my parents would take me to some religious shrine or the other. So we have been to temples, we have been to... Uh, you know, synagogues, we had been to the mosques because my parents would always say, hey, there's a beautiful mosque and it's very powerful. Let's go there for a vacation. And before you go on, had you ever heard of Sri Satya Sai Baba never, before? Never. Okay, so this was an epiphany for you. Correct. And as soon as I read that article, what caught my attention because I was a high school kid, uh, I was into photography, and my parents had actually brought me a beautiful camera. Uh, it was a Leica, a 3G. Just about uh, the best there is. It was, yes. And I had become good at it, much better than my parents, uh, because I think my dad was too much into executive management, whereas I was a student. Mm -hmm. And I literally knew not only how to load a 35 millimeter cassette into it, but I also knew how to do darkroom work. And I s sort of became a, a, a good at uh, available light photography. And I'd sworn myself. Just I like will. we're doing now, standing next to a <laughs> bank in greater San Francisco late at night. It was just wonderful. And so when I read that article, Swami told the, the, the fellow who was doing the interview, conducting it, saying, you know, it is I that chooses to come in a picture that somebody takes. And when I read that, I first thing that I said to myself, I said, come on, Swami. I think I can do that. So in other words, you think you're doing a composition, uh -huh. you take a picture, yeah. and you think you've got it. Yeah. I mean, that's what we are all trained to believe. But this business around whether you shall manifest in that latent image, it was not something that I could relate to. Yeah. And I was just a kid. <laughs> and I had an open mind still, though. All right. <laughs> and so when we went to see Swami the following summer, um, it was in Whitefield. And it was totally uh, different for me because A, we were sitting uh, in Darshan line 
and I was sitting on the sand, uh, not sand, it was actually red mud, literally. Mm -hmm. And it was lined up towards that uh, big banyan tree uh, yeah. that where Swami comes in. And so as soon as he came, he saw both my dad and I sitting on that side and my mother was on the uh, across the aisle, if you will. He came straight to me and he touched me on my head. And frankly, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, he said, Bangaru. And my father was very happy. And, um, and then he blessed. Uh, Did you know what that meant, that uh, word? Well, I was told Bangaru means gold. Mm -hmm. But in what sense is he saying? Uh, yeah. But when he touched my head and said gold. And you had no way of knowing that that's a favorite pet name he uses I for had many. No, I, I'd never seen Swami. I'd never read any books about Swami other than that blurb in yeah. the Illustrated Weekly of India. And then we all went into the, uh, the darshan area, which was under the tree, and we were all seated, and I took my camera. By the way, I also had an 8 millimeter movie camera. You were well equipped. <laughs> a wind-up thing. And did you take that with you, too? And I took pictures of that as well. And those are the days when you were freely allowed to take Absolutely. many pictures. Absolutely. Nobody before. said no, and so I had done my job. And I had loaded my camera with 35 millimeter. It was an uh, Orwo film, uh, uh -huh. and it was a slide film. And then I took plenty of pictures of Swami, or so I thought. And frankly, when the pictures came out processed, I just picked up the slides and I looked up at the light, and I saw pictures, I saw the flame, and I said, ah, I got him. <laughs> but I didn't pay attention anymore. And, and of course, we were already into the Sai fold. Yeah. That was my coming into Swami, if you will. And then years later, back in, uh, now I'm now in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Krishna Reddy, who was then the regional president mm -hmm. of the Bay Area uh, in a Swami uh, organization, the Sai Centers, he asked me if I would take on the responsibility and set up a Baba's birthday program. And so I worked with the whole team in the, in the region. And part of it, I said, you know, hey, I got some pictures of Swami from the days when I was a youngster. It'll be good to pull it out. And, you know, I did work for Kodak as well, so I have a carousel. I loaded the, the 35 millimeter film uh, in a slides, and I started to project. And when I looked at them, I was shocked. There were pictures, of course, with Swami. There was no questions mm -hmm. about it. But the available light shots that I took of Swami, I could say, during the Arati, you see the flame crystal clear, and but there is no Swami. What do you think happened? I guess Swami taught me a lesson. <laughs> that it is, in fact, He that decides. His will. It is His will that really... What a lesson! And how did, your, how did you accept that? I, and, and how did I, your I, ego I, accept that? Frankly, I'm now much more seasoned, and I've been in the Sai Fall, and since then I've had many other experiences, and I have, of course, understood it is Sai above all. Yeah. And so I'm delighted that he did that, but he also gave me an uh, opportunity to mature and see the pictures, because now I can relate. It's like, you know, connecting the dots. Sure, absolutely. So I came to Swami because of his calling through a magazine, and then when we go and see Swami, he also teaches me that yes, in fact, he is in control and kind of allowed me to grow up on my own, uh, if you will, at the same token, didn't ignore me. Well, you were ripe for the picking. <laughs> By your own admission, you were looking for an anchor, a yes. spiritual teacher, guru, avatar, God, father. That's right. Not to replace your father, That's but the right. supreme father. Correct. So. In the intervening years, which have been considerable now, how has that worked for you? How have you changed? Phenomenally. Uh, firstly, I know it is He that watches all over us. I know He's listening to us. Even in the business community that I am in, I always tell myself, you know, you always have to do what is right. And it has played out because after reading a lot about Him, and the fact that it is all about serving Him, which is duty, doing it with love, which is dedication, and doing it in order is discipline. I've really taken those three Ds into my own life, <laughs> and that has been my personal uh, growth, if you will. All of what I see 
is because of the fact that I see Swami and I know I'm doing it for him. And I feel good, good you know, about it. Are you aware of anybody else who walks around and opens up if they're asked and shares such heartfelt love and enthusiasm as, as, as you do on your Baba path? Uh, as you have? You know, one thing I can say is there is no other Swami. There's no <laughs> questions about it. And there are numerous people in the Sai fold that I meet who can relate to my experience because they too They've been are, there. Yes, are yeah. in there, been there, and are still there because they see that this is the light. Yeah. No questions about so it. So who is this Sai Baba? To me, you know, I started off thinking of him as being distant from me. And so I would reach out to him constantly. I still look at him as somebody uh, that is in me. At the same token, I can put him in front of me and admire him because that is who I think I could be if only I behave myself. <laughs> and, and picking up on that first point you said, it took you a while before you ceased thinking that he was somewhat distant from you. Yes, it did. I mean, uh, Was there a turning point in particular? Uh, Many such, you know, meetings because Swami in the uh, in the darshan line, uh, since I've been now maturing under his uh, tutelage, the best way I could put it, he's prepared me. He has come to me several times in darshan line and said similar things, and he he has showered his love, and I know. He and I are one, and I think uh, uh, we are one, but there are days when I, I still feel that, you know, I have to go and reach him. I we have we had a lot of talk this weekend at the Big Baba birthday party on oneness, on the opposite of duality, the opposite of separation. It's a high mark for any of us to think we might even live to see the day we aspire to reaching that. Right. How close do you feel you are? You just gave me an indication with your words. How close are you? I think it's getting closer. It is getting closer. I mean, at times, uh, he's, he does speak to me. I know that. Uh -huh. And it looks, you know, as I said, I'm a scientist, and maybe I didn't mention that. And so I still sometimes think about me and say to myself, how could that be? And <laughs> yet he proves to me it is. So that is the reality, that he is in me, around me, feeling me, knowing me. And yet, sometimes the magic uh, of being the child, you know, in Disneyland, uh, I feel, <laughs> wow, isn't this awesome? <laughs> and my guess is that one of the tragedies, and maybe that's too powerful of a word, maybe one of the sadnesses, and correct me if I'm wrong, of your life is you're left with few words for your fellow scientists who might be out there groping too for something, but for them it has to have a scientific foundation. Yes. Uh, but you know you can relate to all of these events and I really think so but you see it in nature much more readily uh, the fact that there is magic uh, is is obvious and, and and it's a secret how the whole thing comes together <laughs> yeah. right it's and to like me like a symphony and that is Swami yeah. to me that's how I see him somebody was talking about Mozart today yes. and, and how that music could possibly come to him in the midst of right. such turmoil of his life Exactly. And physical disabilities. Exactly. And that's what you're talking about with that's, Baba. That's what I feel as well. I, yeah. I feel the oneness at times and then, and I'm glad if it was always constant oneness, then maybe I would start, stop wondering. Uh, so, so I like being who I am as the kid in the candy shop when I see Swami. <laughs> at the same token, I like to retire in the night knowing that I'm secure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's because we're not all together, all together <laughs> there yet. Right, right. That's, that's the way I feel that yeah. way. So and then awesome. in this illusion called Maya, this life of ours, this part of this massive play, who, may, who, who could possibly know, except for Sai Baba, right. how many illusory previous lies we've had, hundreds, to get to this point? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that for sure, I some, it's like deja vu. Yeah. Uh, at times when I'm living it and I'm telling, wasn't this something that I experienced before? <laughs> and it, it happens again and again. Yeah, sure. And so I, I know it is so. The last question, and I'll turn it over to you. 
just sum up some experiences that you think might be of usefulness to anybody who's watching this new, maybe for the first time, regarding the subject to Sai Baba that might be constructive for them? You know, my th one thing would be go with an open mind. Mm -hmm. Because technically, most of us walk into a situation thinking, I think I know, or I think I can explain that. But that takes you down the wrong path. It's like, just go with an open mind, experience it, and then saying, wow, that's awesome. Uh, that's my thinking. So if you go with a well-constructed thought, then there is little to go and embellish. But if you go with the open mind, then the whole story comes together. And, uh, and I've experienced that constantly. I can't tell you how many times I witnessed this on my own, on, on all my travels, on business, where I encounter the most difficult situation, and I just turn to him and saying, you know, what would you do? And then I just go with an open mind and say, let's work it. And then the next thing I know, good things ha you know, happen. Srinivas, your, your words are enormously useful to me, and I have to imagine by extension through this video to many others. Thank you very much for your journey and for sharing your journey. Thank you. And Syrah. Syrah.